Every year, three million of us head to the Greek islands for our holidays. And it's easy to see why. This is Greece, and look at that. I have a strong affinity with the islands. My mum is Greek. But I've only holidayed here. Here we go. Until now. <laughs> I'm going to see the hidden side. Look, there's nobody here. Hello, everybody. Oh, you're good. From their breathtaking natural wonders. Let me show you our real mother. To the colourful customs and the architectural splendour. That is a miracle of loveliness. It makes me proud to be just that little bit Greek. This is a voyage of discovery and I'm taking you with me. I've reached the Sporades, the scattered ones. Along my travels, I've heard lots of folklore stories about kings, queens and gods who fight and then end up chucking huge bits of land at one another, which end in the creation of a new place. The Sporades are one such archipelago. Legend has it that two Greek titans had a barney, got into a slinging match, and this was born. Ironic that out of such a violent encounter, somewhere so peaceful was created. Known as the Paradise Islands, the Sporades are famed for their lush pine forests and exotic beaches. Located a few miles off the east coast of mainland Greece, the Sporades are a cluster of 24 islands that stretch out into the Aegean Sea. And I'm going to be exploring two of those four inhabited islands. I'll visit Skopelos, a sleepy little place whose charms are largely undiscovered by tourists, despite it being the backdrop for the movie Mamma Mia. But I'm starting on the island of Skiathos. With an international airport, it's the most popular island in the Sporades, which may have something to do with the 60 beaches strung along its 45 kilometers of coastline. But I want to discover the Skiathos only the locals know. And I think the best way to do that is on a boat. That little boat there, that's what I'm going on today. And those boys are going to show me the secret Skiathos. They're called Yanis and Kostas. They're all called Yanis and Kostas. Kalimera! Kalimera! Kalimera, Julia! Welcome to Skiathos. Thank you. Yanis or Kostas? Yanis. Hello, Yanis. <laughs> How are you? Yeah, thank you. Good. Thank you. Good yeah. morning, welcome, Kalimera. Welcome. Hi, Kostas. What a gorgeous boat. This is our boat. The boat is the last boat made in Skiathos. It's traditional Greek fishing boat style. We're going to show you Skiathos, our Skiathos. And we try to make it very nice so you have an amazing day and good memories. Julia, are you ready? I'm Let's ready. go. We're leaving from Kukunaris Beach. Let's go, Costa, Spame. And with its pine fringe swathe of golden sand, you'd be hard pushed to find a lovelier beach in the whole of Greece. But in a few hours, it'll be full of sun seekers. And I want to find the hidden paradise beaches of Skiathos. Already, I feel like I'm escaping the rat race. This is my laptop. <laughs> it's better than a laptop. One of Skiathos' main incomes historically was fishing. But as fish stocks dwindle in the Mediterranean, so do the livelihoods of Greek fishermen like Yanis and Kostas. Little baby one, so okay. we throw back these ones. Bye bye. To supplement their incomes, they've diversified and they offer guided tours of the island's coastline for around 70 euros a day. But these boys are fishermen first and foremost. It's in their DNA. You're doing what your grandfather did and your father before you. You're a family of fishermen. Yeah, fishermen's generations. And uh, now in Skiathos, uh, we are one of the last ones. How many do you think are left? Mm, five, six. That's it? Maybe, yeah. It's scary, but it's how it is now. 
How long do you think you can carry on doing this then, the way things are? The bad days, they are more than the good days in the sea. But we never know because uh, the sea is full of surprises. So, you have to think positive and positive things happen to you. you know? Hallelujah to that. The Mamma Mia boat. Oh, hello, there we go. This area is famous because of a film, Mamma Mia. So there's quite a lot of this going on. I can't hear whether it's ABBA that they're dancing to, but take a look at that crew. It'll be the worst day in your life. <laughs> there. He's not a fan. Hollywood invaded the Sporadis back in 2007. Ever since, Mamma Mia fans have been coming in their droves. But unlike a lot of tourist operators in Skiathos, the brothers don't trade on Mamma Mia. They refuse to. Instead, they trade on the beauty of their island and its hidden bays. Look at this beautiful cove. I mean, it's paradise and there's nobody here. This is the kind of place you can come and discover in Skiathos. And hiding in these coves are a Greek delicacy, sea urchins, known as akinu in Greece. So sea urchins are the black spiky things that you see that you don't ever want to step on. <laughs> They're down here in the seaweed. Yeah, they are around the rocks and there are females and males, so I show you which ones you pick them up. The males are completely black. The females, they have a color, a little bit purple, mm -hmm. a little bit for red. Because it's female, it's like the circle of the woman, so every month it's full of caviar. Double, you know? It's not extraordinary. Two days Nature before is... the full moon, two days after the full moon, after they start being more relaxing. You know? you know when they say inviting waters, this is what they're talking about. Yanis fishes for sea urchins in the traditional way using a sharp knife to help him pry them from their resting place in the shallow waters. Oh my God, it's so crystal clear, it's beautiful. Sea urchins are most commonly found in rocky coves like this and have small tube feet that allow them to cling to the rocks. And only licensed fishermen like Yanis can harvest them during certain months of the year. Akinu! If a sea urchin is bejeweled with a piece of seaweed or a shell or a rock, it means they're alive and therefore edible. So we have some sea urchins here. Female, male. They are such gorgeous creatures, aren't they? With our lunch secured, Yanis wants to let me in on a local secret. Segurias Beach. A short boat ride from Cucanares, it couldn't be more different. This is real Robinson Crusoe stuff. This is my favourite beach, because it's completely quiet, so no many people visit the beach. Only little boats, locals. So all the tourists are around the corner, and here, nobody. Have you ever left Skiathos? Yes, I used to live in Copenhagen, in Denmark, for a couple of years. I can't picture you in Copenhagen. I can't picture you anywhere else other than here. It's important to know who, we, who you are and where you come from. You know? Look my nose. Look my nose. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great thing. <laughs> All that remains is lunch and a Greek fisherman's feast. Yanis is cooking up some mullet he caught first thing this morning. This is a little floating restaurant. Yes, it is a floating... And you read in the paradise. 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 Done, I quickly done. Fresh fried fish, Greek salad and sea urchin. Look at this, what a spread. How utterly delicious and amazing does it look. You eat the sea urchin raw, kind of like an oyster. Nice. Mm. Actually, not that fishy. Try the fish. Oh, wow. Bon appetit. Oh, thank you. I've got a store. Heaven on a plate. Although it's a Greek tragedy that fish stocks have crashed because of pollution and overfishing, Skiathos's coastline has absolutely lived up to its reputation as the paradise island. But it's not just the coast. I've heard hidden away in the hills is one of the most idyllic places on the island. The ultimate place to seek peace is a monastery, and Greece has lots of them. In fact, this is one of the most religious places in Europe. 
There are 10,000 churches and monasteries in Greece and over 50 in Skiathos alone. But there's one here that's got real significance. I've always known from family stories that the struggle for independence from the Ottoman Empire was a key moment in Greek history. When it finally happened in 1821, it was here, in the monastery of Evangelistra, that the country's blue and white flag was raised for the very first time. Father Joseph, hello. Hello, Ms. Julia. Lovely to see you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you in such a beautiful place. Although off the beaten track, the monks sustain their livelihood by selling their homemade produce and liqueurs. Can you show me mm -hmm. some of the monastery? Yes, of course. Thank you. The centerpiece of the monastery is this tranquil chapel. Locals and visitors come here to pray and take a moment. Everywhere around you, wherever you look, it's very ornate. And look at the light coming through that window. Mm. <laughs> it's quite magical, isn't it? People visit the chapel to make offerings to the Virgin Mary. And there she is. These rectangular pieces of metal are called damata. They sell them in shops all over Greece. Uh, when you have a problem, mm -hmm. come here and you put... The images of the damata symbolise what you're meant to be praying for. What does this mean, the eyes? The eyes. We have a problem with the eyes. Oh, with vision, with sight. Mm -hmm. A lot of babies. A lot of babies. This one? Um, married. Married. They want to get married. Mm -hmm. I know a few people who might have put a few of those in there. And we have a lot of karisto. Uh, ah, I've karisto. In Greek, Evkaristo means thank you. Well, Father Joseph, Evkaristo, thank you. To you. Thank you. You're welcome. Very special experience. When you leave Adamata, you first light a candle. Then you make your offering to the Virgin Mary. And mine simply says, thank you. Doesn't matter what religion you are, you should always be grateful. And being here, I have a lot to be grateful for. Next, I'm off to Skopelos, known as the Mamma Mia Island. I'm exploring the Sporades, a peaceful archipelago of 24 islands located to the east of mainland Greece. I'm leaving behind the paradise beaches of Skiathos and heading to its bigger sister, Skopelos. Despite being the main location for the movie Mamma Mia, not that many tourists make the trip over from Skiathos. I've heard that it's sleepier and more laid back than its glitzier neighbour, so hopefully the perfect place to discover a slice of real, authentic Greek life. Skopelos doesn't have an airport, so you can only get there by boat. And my ferries drop me off in Skopelos town. I'm here to meet a man called Bill. You must be Bill. I am. Because it says so on your T-shirt. Bill is actually Greek and he runs a water taxi around Skopelos. So, um, you're Greek, but your name's Bill. I know, my Bill. And you sound my... English. But I, can like sound, I can sound Greek if you like me to ask. <laughs> My Greek name is Williamos. What can I Willielmos. say? Williamos. So I've jumped over here from Skiathos. What's the main difference between Skiathos and Skopelos? People do things outside tourism, very traditional things that are still ingrained in, in, the, in the culture. Bill is going to introduce me to one of those traditional things ingrained in the culture, the Greek wedding. In here? Yep, in here. He's taking me to meet a local lady called Katerina, who's going to fit me out in a traditional Skopelos wedding dress. So why is this so important to Skopelos, this dress, this tradition? Να σας πω η φορεσιά Σκοπέλων είναι από τις ποδεότερες της Ελλάδος. Έχει πάρει και το πρώτο βραβείο. Είναι μοναδική φορεσιά που έχει πολλά φουντώματα. Φοραγούνται 7 φουστάνια από μέσα από την φορεσιά. And this is what prompted them to come and film Mamma Mia and Skopelos. Και είχα, ήμουν και εγώ μαζί τους και έρεψα φουστάνια της Meryl Streep. <laughs> I had Meryl Streep. <laughs> Meryl Streep, she was part of the team that made the dresses for the film. So she's touched she, she Meryl. She has. Yes. Έχεις ακουμπήσει Lady Meryl Streep. Ναι. Wow. Love it. Let's, let's try it on. Now, I'm not a lady adverse to dressing up from time to time. Can't wait to put seven layers on in this heat. But I have to admit, dressing as a Greek bride, this is a first. So far, it doesn't feel very 
very sexy as far as wedding frocks go. Everything is handmade, and it belonged to Katerina's grandmother, her yaya. It's over 130 years old. Look at that. That's very beautiful. Mm. Another layer, and this one's black. This is layer number six. I'm, I'm feeling more Greek by the minute. <laughs> Bravo, Giulia. Para i sei, Giulia. Ecco, adesso, Katrina. Thank you. Para calò, Giulia. Perfect. I feel very Greek and very hot. Beautiful. Apparently, the amount of detail and embroidery on a wedding dress reflected the social standing of the lady wearing it. I was very wealthy, darling. Some brides still get betrothed in all of this garb today. Remind me not to get married in Skopelos. Although my mama Moo would be very proud. I think one of the best ways to see the true side of a place is to get walking and explore on foot. No surprise there. Well, I should be wearing my walking gear. I didn't anticipate all of this. I'm heading to the north of the island, to the town of Glossa. Yes, sir. And I'm just following my big fat Greek nose. Life moves at a different pace here, even by Greek island standards. Hello, my friend, how are you? Unless you happen to come across a local celebration. What's going on over there? Hello, everybody. Fiestas are two a penny in Greece, and I appear to have stumbled upon the annual Skopelos Wine Harvest Festival. <laughs> the Greeks love a bit of grape crushing. When in Rome, or Glossa, in this case. I've got a very small head. There we go. Um, What's we, this? What's gonna, this all about, we're Tom? We're going to make mustaleveria. What's mustaleveria? Custard uh, made from grape juice. Oh, it is custardy. Shall I taste yes. it? You can add a few walnuts or almonds to it. Mm. That's lovely. Really nice. The idea seems to be that Tom loads up an old Hessian bag with black grapes, and a volunteer then enters the vat and crushes them with their bare feet. I'm going in. OK. I can only say it's very squelchy. It's a lovely sensation on your feet. Yes! I'm a big fan of Greek wine, but this vintage is not looking quite so appealing, I must admit. I haven't had a chance to do any exercise today, so... I feel like I'm on the treadmill. I'm on the grape mill. There we go. <laughs> Just a six-kilometre walk from Glossa is one of the most famous sites in Greece. And the only place I could end my Sporadis island adventure. The beautiful chapel of Agios Yanis, St. John. We started with a legend, we're going to finish with a legend. The story goes that a fisherman came across this beautiful outcrop of rock and had some sort of apparition. When he came back the next day, there was a candle lit in exactly the same place. So he and the villagers decided that this must be a special place, and they built the church right at the very top. You might well recognize this location. It was the setting for the final scene of Mamma Mia, and pilgrims of the movie come here to recreate Meryl Streep's rapid ascent to the chapel. There are over 100 steps to negotiate. At least you can stop and enjoy the views on the way. The thing that vexes me slightly, apart from the 106 steps, is that not only should the church not be known as the Mamma Mia church, the whole film shouldn't be called Mamma Mia and set in Greece, it should be called Mamma Moo. That would be the literal Greek translation. Mamma Moo! Oh. oh, look at that. Oh, that is just amazing. And magical. This isn't Indonesia, this isn't Thailand, this isn't somewhere far, far, far away from us. This is Greece, and look at that. Oh, it makes me proud to be just that little bit Greek. <laughs> isn't it pretty? But if you've watched Mamma Mia, you'll know that they couldn't possibly have filmed the wedding sequence inside this church, because there are about 50 people in that scene and you can fit about six people in here. And if you do want to get married in here, I'm afraid you need to be Greek Orthodox. 
and you need to wear one of those dresses. Probably. Oh, and an olive tree. Of course there's an olive tree up here. Why wouldn't there be? An olive tree with a bell. Probably not meant to do this, but... I made it! This chapel marks the end of my trip to the Paradise Islands. And I, for one, can definitely see why they call them that. They're wild, they're peaceful, and they're stunning. I've tried on a Greek wedding dress, I've visited an Orthodox chapel, but sadly for my Mama Moo, there's no big fat Greek wedding yet. Maybe next year. Next time my journey takes me to the Dodakanis. It's dripping in historical treasures. Just look at it. Crossroads of the ancient world. I'll be uncovering the rich multicultural history of Rodos. 500 years and it's still here, it survived. And immersing myself in the architectural splendor of Sini. Have you ever seen anywhere so beautiful?